Hello again YouTube. Another update of the 1971 trailer refurb, rebuild. The Hilux hub is now permanently bolted to the chassis. It's now got the two alloy support beams in to strengthen the chassis and each one has a bolt at the front in the center above the axle and one in the rear so there's three going horizontally or vert yeah, vertically I should say and then that's a total of six bolts holding the alloy to the tr original trailer chassis and then up front it's got on each side it's got two L brackets, it's got one there and one there and what they do is they actually got a bolt going horizontally through the actual alloy plus also goes through the actual trailer chassis so that way it's all up each side, it's got five bolts holding the tub to the chassis and then underneath what I've done is use the original mounting bracket or the mounting slots underneath for the high tensile bolts. So that's happened on both sides and one up the front what I've also done is painted the front with the hammer finish charcoal finish or hammer finish charcoal coloured um, paint just this front section to give it a bit more durability because knowing the cars and dirt roads and everywhere else there'll be dirt stones and all that flicked up and hitting the front fascia so that's received the hammer finish which you can probably see the you know it looks like it's been hammered so that's all on the front insert plus all over the actual chassis and I've also put it across the top of the frame or the top of the tub so as you can see the original factory colour there and the hammer finish is there so charcoal finish all the way around the top so that way it doesn't matter if you get rope or anything on there it's a tough durable finish that won't come off that easily and what I've done is actually on the inside put it down to the join mark which is just along there and I've done that all the way around As for the rear, as you can see, there once I get, as you can see there, that's the bolt where the rear bracket comes through, and it's also got another vertical bolt there at the rear, plus the one that's actually in down above. Once we see it, <laughs> it's they're just in front of the cross beam. There's that one there, the one up front, plus that one. So you've got so that's well and truly securely mounted. And I've also sent the wiring up for the tailgate or for the tail lights. So that one that 
black wire multi cord comes up from the actual left tail light the one that just comes in just there that's the actual brake light for the tailgate comes along joins in with a Oop. at the rear that's how the brackets are set up I've set them up as adjustable so they can slide so that's in the original factory mounting point plus the side one they're the factory bolts on the left and that one there is just a standard high tensile bolt and the actual coach bolt goes through the frame and comes out just there so that's how the rear brackets are being set up and the front that's how they set up as well except they're inside the chassis, front, the chassis rails rather than outside like the rears so that way it keeps the actual frame centred and nice and tight on the actual chassis as for the tail lights what I've done is kept the top brake tail light as it should be so it does the standard tail light for at night time towing and works as normal for when you brake and same with the high mount brake light that works as it should when you put your foot on the brake it comes on and goes off when you take your foot off the brake and as for the lower section that was the original factory indicator and that was the f original factory reverse light so what I've done is instead of having the reverse light in just the one I've got a, just two different bulbs so that top one's the standard indicator bulb which is a bayonet fitting and it has a um, 80 degree pin on it whereas the lower bulb it's also a bayonet fitting but it has a 180 degree bayonet fitting on it so they're both off the shelf indicator bulbs in amber so that way they flash orange when they're activated so that just eliminates having a vacant spot for the reverse lights which are not hooked up so that way that whole clear section comes up as one indicator and it works off the one circuit which I've hooked up to the new wiring and same is on this side so same principle on that tail light except this one just needs I'm just waiting on a new tail light because as you can see it's broken before it actually goes off to be registered as a trailer so that's to be replaced. The only other item I am waiting for to, for it to arrive is the actual front plug so that way I can actually wire it up and plug it into the car so that way they all work as they should with the car. And after I've done those two little niggly issues, I've just got to source a set of new rims and tyres because these are old 14 inch Holden rims and the actual light truck tyres that are on them, the 14 inch, I can no longer get the 14 inch light truck tyre to suit them. So I've looked around to see if I could get new ones and all six tyre shops locally don't stock them and I'd have to specially get them in from the US at $190 per tyre 
plus shipping. And as we all know, the US charges an arm and a leg for postage. And I wasn't willing to pay upwards of 300, 300 bucks per tyre just to put new ones on for Rego for a 14 inch. So I'm going to look for a 15 inch rim and put a standard 205 65 15 inch tyre on it which is 75 bucks from the local tyre shop and that will fix it and I've also fitted the genuine Hilux mud flaps so there's not much clearance there it looks like a bit of gap there but I cannot fit my finger under it so just got to wait for to find some new rims that will actually fit these old Holden hubs if worse comes to worse since they're an old hub I'll just replace them because as we all know that 70s Holdens they're not exactly the best well, they're a nice car but finding parts for them it's like finding a hand with teeth the last item I have to do before it actually goes for blue slip is here under all the paint on the actual drawbar it's just in there I have to sand it back and put a coat of clear there so that way the VIN number is visible so that way they can identify the actual trailer for blue slip so that way it's, just, it's essentially a roadworthy to say that the trailer is safe and meets all the criteria and it hasn't been rebirthed so blue slips 32 bucks and it's essentially a roadworthy and a vehicle ID check so that way they can check it make sure it's clear so it's right to go once I get that it can be re-registered and once they check it down on this front portion of the drawbar on the left hand side they will attach a brand spanking new compliance plate with all these trailer details with me as the manufacturer so that way it's reclassed from a 1971 model to a 2016 model so they'll class it as a not as a well if it's registered in March 2016 they'll class it as a 0216 trailer rather than a 0671 but depending on how we go, I might see if they can just leave it as a 1971 model. Save some change in all the VIN and everything else on it, which can easily be done. done. I'll just get them to update the current details on it. Because if they, if it has to be issued with a brand new VIN, it will have to undergo the full weight. Um, inspection which means I have to take it over the, the weigh bridge to see how heavy it is and everything else whereas if I just leave it as the VIN that it's got now and just put the compliance plate onto it to its details that it's already got I can re-register it as the 1971 model rather than the 2016 so I'll see what the mechanic says and go the easiest route so it might just have the new VIN and compliance plate and everything else put on it to put it as a 2016 model since how it's been fully refurbished but if the mechanic says no nah, we'll just do it as per the details that are on it it will remain as a 1971 homemade trailer rather than 2016 it's a bit confusing but <laughs> what can you do We'll just see what the mechanics and the Oz, Ozviz station says. If you're wondering what an Ozviz station is, it's an authorised vehicle inspection station here in New South Wales, Australia. They pretty much do all the vehicle inspections. There's two types. One that's allowed to do blue slips as well as pink slips, which means they don't do any sort of roadworthy. And there's others that just do pink slips, which are just the standard roadworthy for your annual roadworthy or for your annual rego I should say but once this has been re roadworthy and blue slipped 
it will not need another blue slip as long as we don't let the rego lapse again like we did in 2013. So once it's re-registered once it's re-registered again, it will not need another roadworthy as long as it stays registered each year, which I'm happy about. So I'll just wrap it up there and give you another update when that tail light comes in and that front plug comes in. I'll show you how I wire it up and go from there. Yes, that's how it's looking so far. So I'll wrap it up there, update you with those two little bits. And the day it actually goes for blue slip, I'll show you the process. So peace out.